This video is part of a series of help videos from Learn Electrics on Amendment 2 of the 18th edition of the Wiring Regulations. This series of videos will help you to study for the exam and should improve your chances of passing enormously by showing you how to use the book and how to easily find the answers to the questions by reading the question and extracting the keywords from it. Try to avoid randomly flicking through the book in the hope that the answer will suddenly appear. It rarely does and it wastes a lot of time. And equally, if you've already passed the exam but you are a little rusty, then these videos will help you to brush up on your knowledge and maybe even give you some new learning. Why do we have ZS? That's a reasonable question and one that is frequently asked. In the exam, you will get at least five questions on ZS and disconnection times, possibly more. To improve your exam pass marks, it is essential that you understand the information in this video. If you follow this video, this will be five easy questions for you in the exam. First, let's clear up a little thing. ZS is an impedance because it is measured on a live circuit, alternating current. It has frequency. But resistance in our trade is measured on dead circuits or DC circuits with no frequency. R1 plus R2, for example, is a resistance, a DC measurement on a dead circuit. But they are both measured in ohms. And at 50 cycles per second, or 50 hertz, the difference between impedance and resistance is so small that it's not worth worrying about. So, for me, if you call ZS a resistance, or an impedance, I would still know what you were talking about. Ohm's law tells us that the lower the impedance, the greater the current that flows. Impedance down, current up. The greater the current that flows, the quicker that the fuse or breaker will disconnect the supply. So, we want big currents to flow during a fault. And the quicker the supply is disconnected, the greater the chance of a person surviving an electric shock. ZS is a measurement that will help us to determine if a fuse or breaker will protect persons against the dangers of an electric shock during a fault. Will the circuit be made safe before the user is hurt? The lower the ZS, the better, because this means bigger currents and quicker disconnection times. If we look at page 3, the contents page of the Wiring Regulations book, we will find part 4, and this is all about protection for safety. Below this heading is chapter 41, protection against electric shock. And this is where we will find information about ZS and disconnection times. If we turn to chapter 41 and go to page 64, we will find regulation 411.3.2. This is our starting point. It is titled Automatic Disconnection in Case of Fault. This is what we shorten to ADS, Automatic Disconnection of Supply. In other words, if a fault occurs, the fuse or breaker will automatically disconnect the supply and make the circuit safe. The red box here tells us that table 41.1 on the next page only applies to final circuits. It also tells us that it only applies to circuits up to a certain size of amps as shown in the blue circle. 63 amps for circuits with sockets or 32 amps for fixed equipment. Let's assume that our circuit is a final circuit and it is below the amp limits specified. Table 41.1 on page 65 will tell us the maximum disconnection time for safety for different nominal voltages and different earthing systems. Nominal voltage is what we call the voltage, not what we actually measure. This means that in a household kitchen we call the nominal voltage 230 volts and that is what we use for all of our calculations, even if we measure 240 volts or 250 volts. For the kitchen, at 230 volts nominal, we will use the second block of data. The symbols at the top say, the nominal voltage is over 120 volts and up to and including 230 volts. On the left, we can choose the earthing system. Let us use TN, which is shorthand for TNCS or TNS. 
Where the column and row cross, we have 0.4 seconds. This is our maximum disconnection time for that particular installation, 0.4 seconds. If table 41.1 does not apply, what do we do? Just below the table are two important regulations, and they do come up as exam questions. 411.3.2.3 tells us that if table 41.1 is not applicable, or if it is a distribution system, then for a TN system, we allow a disconnection time of 5 seconds. And regulation 411.3.2.4 tells us, this time, that if table 41.1 is not applicable, or it is a distribution system, then for a TT system, we must allow a disconnection time of 1 second. We can summarise this in a table. For any final circuit that meets regulation 411.3.2.2 on page 64, use table 41.1 to find the disconnection time and the two ZS tables shown, which we will look at next. For any TN circuit that does not meet regulation 411.3.2.2, let's say an 80 amp circuit, then we apply 5 seconds as a disconnection time and we use the ZS tables shown in the middle row. And then, for a TT circuit not meeting the regulation 411.3.2.2, we apply a one second disconnection time and use the ZS tables indicated in the bottom row. In the 18th edition exam, you will be expected to be able to differentiate between these tables. Don't lose marks because you don't understand. Take the time to know this. Looking at the ZS tables now and answering the question, what is the maximum ZS impedance permitted? We will begin with table 41.2 on page 67, which is for fuses only. It tells us it is for 0.4 second circuits, which implies final circuits only, and you must remember this. There are four types of fuses shown. BS88-2 BS88-3 and notice here that the fuse sizes shown do not exceed 63 amps. This table is for final circuits only. The next fuse type is BS3036, the old rewirable type of fuses. And lastly, the plug top fuse BS1362. Look also at note 1 just below the table. It states that these tables have been adjusted for a C min factor of 0 0.95. This is an adjustment that's already been made to the ZS figures to allow for 5% voltage fluctuations. And we cover this in more detail in another video. You may get a question that asks what the C min factor is. And now you know 0 0.95. Moving on to page 68 we find table 41.3 for circuit breakers and RCBOs. This table covers 0 0.4 second and 5 second disconnection times, so it is for both final circuits and distribution circuits. Three types of breaker are available, type B, C or D. Read the question, it will tell you the type. They all have different ZS values. We've highlighted in red a Type B breaker of 32 amps rating and vertically below 32 is the ZS value 1.37 ohms. But hang on, some people say, when I'm on site, we use a different ZS value. Yes, you do, because these tables are showing tabulated values from tables in the regulations book. Tabulated means from a table. On site, you're using measured values which are these very same tabulated numbers with a factor of 80% applied, the 80% rule to allow for temperature changes. In the exam, you will be asked for tabulated ZS values, exactly as shown in these tables here. Moving on to page 69, we find table 41.4, the table for fuses, with a 5 second disconnection time for distribution circuits. There are four types of fuse as before, but notice in the orange circle, the fuse sizes now exceed 63 amps, because this is a distribution circuit, and this one is showing 200 amps. 
And lastly, table 41.6 on page 74. We use this table for reduced low voltage systems, such as we would get from the output of the big yellow 110 volt transformers. These transformers are centre tapped earth transformers or CTE and the voltage output is often written 55-0-55. Look at the table. The columns are numbered 55 volts for single phase and 63.5 volts for three phase. Only a five second disconnection time applies to these circuits and they cater for types B, C and D circuit breakers. Also, do not be confused by the C and D column. Type C can be 55 volts or 63.5 volts and so can type D. We will do a couple of examples shortly but first an easy way to get to the right pages quickly in the exam is to remember page 65. This is where it all starts. It is where you will find table 41.1 and all the other tables that follow after. Remember page 65, make it stick in your head. Any question on disconnection times, ZS or loop impedance etc, go straight to page 65. Look at how this information flows. Page 65 is table 41.1 for disconnection times. Once you know the disconnection time, you can find the correct ZS table to use. Turn the page and you have table 41.2 for ZS values for fuses in 0.4 second final circuits. Turn the page again and there are the ZS values for circuit breakers and RCBOs in table 41.3. The ZS values in this table are for 0.4 second final circuits and for 5 second distribution circuits. And the next page is table 41.4 for 5 second fuses in distribution circuits. And finally, turn another 3 pages and you have table 41.6 on page 74, which is for the reduced low voltage circuits of 55 volts and 63.5 volts. So remember page 65, it really is the key to finding answers quickly and time matters in the exam. Let's have a look now at some exam type questions. This question is related to ZS and disconnection times. A cooker is installed in the kitchen of a dwelling. The earthing system is TNCS and the circuit is protected by a 32 amp BSEN 60898 circuit breaker type B. The question is, what is the maximum permitted disconnection time and the maximum permitted ZS for this circuit? Pause the video and attempt the question. We are expected to make some assumptions. In a kitchen, in a dwelling, implies 230 volts nominal and single phase. We are expected to make that connection. We can also assume it is a final circuit and it is not exceeding 32 amps. Looking at table 41.1 on page 65, we choose the second block. The nominal voltage is greater than 120 volts but does not exceed 230 volts. It's a TN system. It is AC and where the column and row cross is the first part of our answer 0.4 seconds. The next part of the answer is found on page 68 in table 41.3. Because it is a BSEN 60898 circuit breaker, it is a type B breaker 32 amps and below the 32 is the answer 1.37 ohms. So our complete answer is 0.4 seconds disconnection time and 1.37 ohms for ZS. Now try this one. If a 63.5 volt system is protected by a 10 amp type C BSEN 60898 circuit breaker, what is the maximum permitted ZS? You need to pick out the key words the clues to finding the answer. 63.5 volts implies reduced low voltage. ZS implies start at page 65. And flick just five pages to find table 41.6 on page 74. We have four multiple choice answers as shown. Pause the video and have a go at answering the question. Looking at table 41.6 on page 74, we can find 10 amps on the left hand side and travelling along the row we come to the columns 
for type C and D and two columns 55 volts and 63.5 volts. The answer for the type C will be found in the 63.5 volt column as 0 0.60 ohms. It cannot be answer choice A since ZS is measured in ohms and this choice is in amps. The answer must be D 0 0.60 ohms. Watch out for this type of question in the exam where they mix amps and ohms and sometimes volts as answers. Another question now. A BS 88-3 fuse rated at 32 amps is installed in a TNS distribution circuit. What is the maximum permitted ZS value? Again, pause the video and attempt the question. This is a distribution circuit and it is a TNS earthing system. You must be on page 69 for fuses, table 41.4. Those with a disconnection time of 5 seconds. Find BS88-3, not BS88-2. Find 32 amps and there is your answer. Answer B, 1.6 ohms. And lastly, this question. A socket ring circuit in a TNS system is protected by a 30 amp BS3036 fuse. What is the maximum permitted ZS value for this circuit as shown in the tables? Pause the video and attempt this yourself. It's a socket ring circuit. This implies it is a final circuit. This then means 0 0.4 seconds disconnection time. Go to table 41.2 on page 67. Find BS3036. Find 30 amps. And you should have answer C, 1.04 ohms. And that's it. I hope you found this video useful. Being able to find the correct ZS number is so very important in the exam and on site. Practice is the key. Go over the questions again until you are confident with them. And good luck in the exam. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos. And remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.